ready to open the hood, useful for the tutorials. And for car parts, the right idea is the Mr. Auto app. Easy, fast, and with better prices than on the website. You can find the bulk clutch kit used in the video exclusively on the Mr. Auto website, linked in the description. Turn your engine off. Pull up the handbrake. Pull on the bonnet release lever. And open the bonnet. For this operation, you'll need to remove the battery and ECU. To do this, we recommend watching the video How to Replace the Car Battery Peugeot 207 1.4 16 valve. You will now need to remove the battery tray. Next, remove the battery tray. Take a ratchet, an extension and a 10mm socket and unscrew the two screws holding the tray in place. Then, unclip the relay box from the plastic tray. Using a flathead screwdriver, unclip the electrical sheaths from their housings. You can now remove the battery tray assembly. Move the ECU to its side. You can now see the airbox you need to remove in order to access the various components. Using a flathead screwdriver, loosen the clamp holding the airbox. Disconnect the breather. Remove the airbox sensor. Next, remove the air intake duct by pressing on either side of it. You can now remove the airbox. Make sure to turn it upwards and pull towards you. Using a flathead screwdriver, disconnect the reverse sensor. Using a ratchet, an extension and a 13mm socket, unscrew the screw that holds the engine electrically grounded. Position the ECU on the other side. Using a 10mm ratchet, unscrew the screw holding the cooling hose in place. Now unclip the two gearbox controls by levering on the ball and socket joint with a flathead screwdriver. Using a ratchet, an extension and a 13mm socket, unscrew the gear shift block from the gearbox. Then, push the gearbox block out of the way. Loosen the stud bolts on the front wheels. Lift the front of your vehicle. Place the vehicle on the axle stands. We strongly suggest watching the tutorial, raising your vehicle safely before carrying out this step. To change the clutch kit on your vehicle, you'll need to remove the wheels to gain full access. Don't forget to slide them under the vehicle. It is now time to get under the vehicle. You'll also need to unscrew the anti-jamming bar to make it easier to screw and unscrew the gearbox drain plug. Using a ratchet and a 16mm socket, unscrew the four screws holding the bar in place. Then remove it. Changing the clutch requires to remove both drive shifts. The gearbox must therefore be bled so that oil does not spill everywhere. That is why we strongly advise you to watch our video Change the Gearbox Oil Peugeot 207 1.48 valve. Now it's time to remove the mudguards. Remove the screws and clips holding the front mudguards in place.
Then remove the mud guards. Start by blocking the disc rotation with a flathead screwdriver. Using a pry bar and a 30mm socket, loosen the hub nut on both sides of the vehicle. To remove the drive shaft from the hub, the bolt joint must be disengaged from the axle stub's control arms. Unscrew the knuckle nut from the wishbone using a 17mm socket wrench, a ratchet and a 16mm socket. Then remove the screw. Using a crowbar, lever all the control arm from the steering knuckle. You can now remove the drive shaft from the wheel hub. Now it's time to disconnect the drive shaft from the gearbox. To do this, you need to pull very hard on the assembly to unclip the transmission. This may take some time. We advise you not to leave it between the gearbox and the transmission, as this could damage the gearbox housing. But if you can't do otherwise, be careful. You'll need to lower the gearbox to access the clutch. You'll need to remove the half bucket on the driver's side. Using the ratchet and a female Torx Z16 socket, unscrew the screw holding the half cradle to the cradle. Using the ratchet and a 16mm socket, unscrew the cross member under the radiator on the driver's side. Then, using the ratchet and a 13mm socket, remove the two screws holding the half cradle to the plastic component behind the bumper. Remove the half cradle. Then, using a 16mm socket, unscrew the two screws on the anti-tilt motor mount. Then, remove it. Using a socket wrench and an 8mm Allen socket, unscrew the screw at the drive shaft of the gearbox that connects the exhaust line to the engine. Between the radiator and the engine block, you can now see the clutch receiver pressed against the clutch fork, whose operation we'll explain later. Then, using a small ratchet and a size 13 socket, Unscrew the two screws holding the clutch centre in place. Unscrew the transmitter cable and position it in such a way that it won't interfere with future operations. Now it's time to remove the gearbox. To remove the gearbox from the engine, eight screws need to be removed. In these images, you can see where the first two starter screws need to be removed using a ratchet and a 13mm socket. Then, using the same tools, remove the screw just below. Then on the driver's side, use the same tools to remove the two screws at the bottom of the gearbox.
Then, from above the gearbox controls, using a ratchet and a 13mm socket, unscrew the third screw holding the starter motor in place. Move the starter away from the gearbox, as the centering pin can make it difficult to separate the two blocks. You can use a screwdriver to help you. You'll need to jack up the crankcase to support the engine when you remove the gearbox side engine mount. Unclip the electrical wiring guide to gain access to the motor mount screws on the pendulum support. Using a ratchet, an extension and a 16mm socket, start by unscrewing the two screws connecting the engine mount to the gearbox pendulum bracket. Then lower the engine a few centimetres, making sure that it does not pull any part as you lower it. Then, using an extension ratchet and a size 13 socket, unscrew the two accessible screws holding the pendulum bracket to the gearbox. Pull on the motor to access the third screw. Then remove the bracket. You now have access to remove the last two screws holding the gearbox to the engine. The gearbox is now free. Shift it outwards to completely disengage it from the engine block before lowering it. Don't hesitate to ask for help from a friend to remove it, as it is heavy and difficult to handle. You can now view the clutch of your vehicle. Here's a tip. To block the rotation of the clutch, use the long pin that connects the gearbox to the engine block. Install an eye wrench between the clutch screw and the stud to block any rotation. Using a ratchet and a 6mm Allen socket, remove the six screws holding the clutch to the flywheel. Remove the clutch. You can now see the flywheel. In some cases, it is crucial to change the flywheel at the same time as the clutch. If necessary, we recommend you watch our video How to Change the Flywheel on a Megane 2 1.5 DCI. The procedure is virtually identical. Okay, guys, if we can share this video with you and help you save a lot of money, is also thanks to our partner, Mr. Otto. So, if you want to support us and buy the part for this operation, visit their website. Okay, back to work. You can find the ball clutch disc and the housing used in the video on the Mr. Auto website and in the link in the description. Start by cleaning the flat surface of the clutch housing that is in contact with the clutch disc using some brake cleaner and a cloth. Then fit the clutch disc, positioning the part marked gearbox side against the clutch bell. In order to reinstall the clutch on the flywheel, the clutch disc and housing need to be perfectly centered. It is therefore imperative that you have a clutch centering tool, something you can find in the description of the video. Once the tool is properly installed, check that the disc and housing are perfectly aligned. If this is not the case, you will not be able to insert the transmission shaft into the clutch disc when fitting the clutch housing. Clean the contact surface of the flywheel with some breaker cleaner and a cloth.
you can see the three centering pins for fitting the clutch to the flywheel. Take the newly assembled part and install it in the flywheel. We strongly advise you to install brand new clutch screws. You can find them in the description of the video. Roughly replace the screws by hand. Then tighten the staggered or quincux pattern using a torque wrench. You can now remove the centering tool. When you change the clutch, it is important to also replace the clutch release bearing. Pull on the clutch fork to unclip it and remove the clutch release bearing from the fork. It is now time to clean the inside of the housing which is lined with all this dust with brake cleaner. Grease the clutch release bearing on the ball joint of the clutch fork. You can find the ball clutch release bearing used in the video on the Mr. Auto website and in the link in the description. Place the release bearing on the clutch fork and push the assembly back into place. Grease the input shaft and its cavity with gear grease. But don't use too much grease, because if the grease spreads out, it may affect the clutch's efficiency. You can also find this grease in the video description. Now, you can put the gearbox back on. You will have to insert the transmission shaft into the clutch disc cavity. Again, you're advised to get help from a friend to handle this tricky step. When you place the first two screws back in, Preferably one on the top of the engine block and one on the bottom, tighten them very lightly and check that the gearbox is resting against the engine block. This means that your transmission shaft is positioned correctly in the clutch. Reinstall the gearbox bracket and screw it back. Finish off the tightening with a torque wrench. Using the jack, lift the engine block and position the pendulum support against the engine mount. Then screw the screws back in. Finalize the tightening of the screws with a torque wrench. Remove the jack. Screw back the two driver side screws at the bottom of the gearbox. Reinsert the starter, then screw back in the three retaining screws. Finish off the tightening with a torque wrench. Replace the screw at the drive shaft on the gearbox, then tighten with a torque wrench. Screw the exhaust line screw back onto the engine. Finish off the tightening with a torque wrench. Replace the anti-tilt engine mount and tighten the two screws. Finish off the tightening with a torque wrench. You can now replace the clutch sender in its slot, taking care to position the moving parts with the bellows in the clutch fork slot. Then retighten the two screws. Finish off the tightening with a torque wrench. Reclip the cable. Refit the passenger side half cradle. Reassemble the plastic part. Screw the metal crossbar back on.
retighten the two screws connecting the half roll bar to the plastic block. Then, screw back the ball connecting the half cradle to the cradle. Re-embed the drive shaft on the gearbox side. Then reinsert the drive shaft into the stub axle. Reinstall the control arm ball joints in the stub axles. Then screw it back in. Do the same with the drive shaft on the passenger side. Reinstall the hub nuts. To be able to screw the hub nuts back on, you have to block the disc's rotation. Insert a thin flatted screwdriver that can slip in between the two sides of the disc. You have to insert it in front of the brake caliper mount so that it butts up against the latter. Screw the hub nuts back on. Finish up the tightening with a torque wrench. Refit the gearbox drain plug. Then refit the anti jamming bar. Then retighten the four screws. Finish up the tightening with a torque wrench. Reinstall the mod guards. Put the wheels of your vehicle back on. And lower it to the ground. You can now tighten the hub nut with a fine chisel. It is now necessary to refill the oil in the gearbox. To do this, we recommend watching the video How to Change the Gearbox Oil on a Porsche 207 1.48 valve. Replace the gear shift unit on the gearbox and screw back the two screws. Refit the gear shift ball joints. Screw back the cooling hose retaining screw. Screw the engine ground back on. Reconnect the reverse sensor connector. Reclip the electrical wiring guide. Replace the battery tray. Reclip the relay box. Reclip the electrical sheets. Replace the battery tray. Reinstall the battery. To do this, we recommend watching the video How to Replace the Car Battery Peugeot 207 1.4 valve. Reinstall the air box. Screw the air intake duct back on. Reconnect the breather. Reconnect the duct. Reclip the airbox sensor. Operation completed. Hi, it's Theo from Tool. I hope this video has helped you a lot in your car maintenance. We would be super grateful if you could spread the word so that we can produce even more tutorials. Simply give us a like, a comment and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us boost the channel and help the whole community. Thanks a lot and have a great one.